you know, I, you can have your opinion about it one way or the other. Um, the bottom line is they're doing something. And so I'm pretty thrilled about that. Um, so I know everybody's talking about the $10,000 student debt relief. It's 20,000 if you had a Pell Grant, but it's only for people that make under 125,000 a year. So it's, you know, it's means tested. Um, you know, me personally, I'd be like, just give it to everybody, but whatever. Um, but that's the headline. And that's because it's the most interesting thing to say on the news, right? But what nobody's talking about is... Well, oh. well, let's, let's also be honest, though. That's a pretty sexy component of it. I mean, like, right. the last time the government was like, hey, guess what? We're going to give you 10 to 20 grand of money that's not your own tax money that you got refunded. We're just going to give it to you. And that's essentially... Yeah, but it's, you know, but it's also kind of backhanded, too, because... The government is why a lot of us have these student loans in the first place. So it's kind of like, okay. you got, I mean, I, I'm just, if we're making a political argument. Us into the situation and not actually doing anything to help us out. So you know what? Yeah. It's like, Let's Lacey, it. if, if I'm, if I, if I punch you in the face every day and then one day I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give you one week where I don't punch you in the face. And you're like, wow, isn't he generous? <laughs> it's a little bit what this feels like. I'm just saying. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that would have been better had you said instead of giving me a week not punching me in the face one day you just give me a bandage. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you a bandage. All right, you give me a bandage. <laughs> I, I won't let you bleed on the floor. <laughs> All right. Okay, that that was really violent, but uh, <laughs> I feel traumatized just thinking about. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to punch you. I'm thinking about how much my hand would hurt. Uh, <laughs> That's my motivation right there. Um, no, so the, that's the, the the student led debt relief is is the big headline um, because it's the most sexy thing to talk about. There are a lot of other things in this though that are also I think equally attractive. One is they're capping how much uh, colleges can raise tuition going forward, and they're putting more money back into colleges and they're putting more conditions on that. So colleges can no longer start racking up fees and a bunch of other shit anymore. They have to keep it into a certain level to keep it feasible. So the government is now giving them more funding, but they're making it contingent on you have to follow all these rules, which is what it used to be like in the 60s and 70s. Right. Um, when, you know, we had the big boom when people started going to college. Uh, so I think that's a very positive thing that the government's dumping more money in the higher ed. Um, on top of that fact that they've done is so under Bush, what he did was he capped it at uh, your student, your federal student loans, not private loans, just your federal student loans. You couldn't be charged more, you couldn't be expected to pay more than 15% of what they call discretionary income, which is basically just extra money that they assume you had, right? Right, they, they have their own special formula that you yeah. can plug that into to decide. Yeah, it's not your total income. It's what what you had left over, essentially. Um, Obama then capped that lower at 10%. Biden has now pushed that down to 5%, and they've narrowed what qualifies as discretionary income. So that 5% is actually closer to like 35 or 4 of what it was before. So that's great news because if you... If you have a ton in student loans and you're just never going to pay it off, you just pay the minimum until you die. And then the loan's forgiven when you die. I mean, the negative is you have to pay it till you die, but, but still. But you have a lot of people that are like retired where it's like they went to school or they had grandkids or kids that went to school and they took out plus loans and shit like that because they wanted their kids to go to school. And so they, you know, they kind of threw themselves on the, on the fire, you know, to do that. And they owe, you know, a hundred and two hundred thousand dollars in student loans. Well, what happens is, is uh, if you can't pay that, the government can take 15% of your social security, which is, that's what you're living on is devastating to pay right, those loans. Yeah, that's absolutely devastating because I mean, this will have to be a future video because we definitely have a retirement savings crisis in this country. Oh, absolutely. But 
think about it, people don't have much saved for retirement, and Social Security is really meant to be a supplemental form of income, but right. that's what a lot of people's primary is, honestly. So if you got, you know, 15% well, right. or whatever, right. and I, off of there because of student loans. And I have plenty of arguments about how we should beef up Social Security quite a bit, but... Um, but yeah, but think about it. They can't take that, the 15% that they could take out of that, they can't take more than 5% now of your discretionary income going forward come next year, right? So if your discretionary income, if you, all you're living on is Social Security, your discretionary income is probably almost nothing, right? So that 5% is probably $0. Maybe it's 100 Right, but if it's zero, you just pay your zero dollar payment every month and you're good. This is also great if you're getting out of college, you're trying to get a job, you have no discretionary income because you don't really have an income or you have a very small income starting out, right? The government won't require you to pay more than that, that 5% of whatever the discretionary. So it'll always, it'll be a small amount for most people that are starting out or struggling. So it won't be like eating you away where you like, like, God, I owe 10%. You know, I have to pay that $200 a month and I'm, you know, I'm living on 20 grand a year. You know, to take 20, 20, you know, $2,400 away from somebody who's living on 20 grand. That's a lot. That's, you know, that's, that's rent and groceries and for at least two months. Right. Um, so that's rough. Uh, so that's all gone down and pretty much gone gone to a point where it's almost gone away um the other cool thing about that is is okay so you're paying the minimum well the loan's accruing interest so it's still growing because you're not paying down the principal or paying down the interest completely right not anymore if you're as long as you make the minimum payment whatever your minimum payment is the government will now pay for the interest so your loan will not grow as long as you're making the minimum payment. So if your minimum payment is 100 or zero, as long as you make your payment, even if it's $0, you make your $0 payment every month, right? And when I say that, I mean, you just don't do anything. <laughs> you got $0, I mean, but, but you're meeting your goal, right? That's a big deal. That one is a really, really big deal because I can't tell you how many people I know that have been making minimum payments, you know, not not necessarily like staring at the balance because they currently check the bill every month and just have it automatically coming out because oh, yeah. it saves them a little money by doing that. And uh, they log in every once in a while to like update their payment plans, whatever. They look down and go, how is it $20,000 higher? I've been making all my payments, yeah. you know, and, and that happens. People's loans grow exponentially just because of the interest getting dumped on top of it. So that one, while it's not like the sexy headline going on, it's it's really a serious thing that's going to help a lot of people. Yeah. Let's, let me do this real quick. So let's say you had a 20,000 uh, and you were making, so $20,000 loan, you were making $600 a year and paying 50 bucks a month payments. In 10 years, your $20,000 loan would be worth, would still be to owe 24,700 or 24,000. So you'd have, your loan would have grown by $4,757.35 in 10 years, even though you were paying $600 a year because you weren't paying down the interest enough right. or paying to the principal. That isn't going to happen anymore. The government will cover that money. So if you're paying your $50 a month and that's what your minimum payment is, right? That loan will still be 20,000 in 10 years. It won't be 24. Right. So it might not be less, but at least it's not getting worse. It's not going to get worse. And you got to think about this. We have 1.6 trillion in debt. How much of that, and that's student loan debt, total student loan debt in the country. How much of that is interest that's accrued? I bet you a big chunk of that is interest that's accrued, right? And next time we'll get into more of the politics of what, what happened with all that, but that that's a big deal. So the government's going to pay for the, the accrued interest as long as you're making your minimum payments. Your minimum payments are going to go down 
right? They're dumping more money into school and they're trying to get more kids to go to college and trying to make it more feasible for them to go to college so they're not burdened with the kind of debt that you and I fucking had. So I got to tell you right now, this is, I, for an executive order, I'm really thrilled about this. And um, if you're watching this, go, and I'll put this in the, the link in the description below, um, ed.gov slash subscriptions, forward slash subscriptions. You can get notifications on this for how to go forward with this. Uh, for how to get your $10,000 debt relief, when to file for that. Um, right now, you should be looking at it filing soon because they, I think they're, they've released it or they're going to release it any day now. And, yes, so and if you want to get it done this year, you should file right now. Yeah, let me jump in on that one. So the government has suggested that for the majority of us, they have our information and we should be seeing this automatically but they may not have all of the appropriate information for all of the people. So they are yeah. making a paper form, which should be a one pager. I haven't seen it yet because I don't know if it's even come out yet. Mm -hmm. um, but they're supposed to be putting that out this month, which is the month of October. And they are recommending that people go ahead and file that if they're not seeing an automatic forgiveness hit their accounts. And the suggestion has you should, been- You should file any, sensitive people. You should file anyway. File it anyway. File um, anyway. It's the government, they can deal with it. But the suggestion they have made is to file it by the middle of November. The reason that is a special time frame is because they believe it will take four to six weeks to process it. Mm -hmm. And if you file it by the middle of November, that means by the end of the calendar year, you will have received your forgiveness in theory. But of course, like the IRS gets backlogged. So, I mean, we don't know if this will get backlogged too. Who knows? Well, I, 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 I'm actually... Uh... I'm a little bit more confident. I'm confident in this, and I'm actually a little bit more confident, uh, especially since they've dumped a lot more money in the IRS and the U.S. Postal Service and stuff like that. So I'm, I mean, but, yeah, not, not, I, I mean, not to, I mean, I'm a liberal. I'm not a liberal. I'm further left than that, but not the bitch. But like, as a financial planner, man, when I started, it's like you call the IRS, and it would you'd be on hold for like four minutes, and you get somebody, and it would be resolved in like ten or fifteen minutes, right? Under Trump, it would take you three to four hours. It might take you two days. I mean, they cut so much fund. The government didn't I'm also function. a tax preparer, so when, when I get a situation where I literally have to call the IRS, I go, oh, great. Yeah. Well, it's gotten uh, better, but it's gotten better in the last year. I'm just saying. It's true. It has gotten better. <laughs> it's gotten way better. Let's, let's loop back around, though. Sorry, sorry. Just want, gossip, gossiping bullshit. Yes. Yeah. The, the reason it's really important that you file by the middle of November, assuming everything operates on time. And yes, I do have a little more confidence that this one will operate within its correct time frame. Yeah. But sooner is better. Yeah. Sooner is better because as of the end of this calendar year, the pause on payments that has existed throughout the COVID pandemic is going to be done. They said they're not kicking the can down the road any further. So we're going to all have to start making our payments again. Mm -hmm. If you've already made sure your forgiveness is in check, then you will be making payments under these certain new guidelines mm -hmm. and with a lesser balance, mm -hmm. which means your monthly payments, although not zero, which has been fun, um, we'll go down. are going to be significantly better than what they were pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. So we want to give the government a little assist so that we can have the lower payments going into the new year. Absolutely. Yeah.